Welcome to part two of the fully 3D printed radio controlled jet boat. After the last video, I finalized the design and started printing out the sections. This is section number one. All in all, I think this print took around 60 hours uh, and almost an entire roll of filament. And the unfortunate part is that actually when I got to, I think it was about 90% of the weight on the print, there was a power outage that caused me to have to print out the remaining 10 percent of the print that was left uh, separately and actually glue on the section just to be able to salvage the print that I'd made. I didn't really want to waste that much plastic for some reason that just felt wrong to me. Uh, so I ended up using, I think I used two part epoxy and some hot glue to hold it on while the epoxy cured. That ended up working out pretty well. I mean, it's not perfect and it actually right now is leaking a little bit from there, but uh, better than throwing out, you know, 800 grams of plastic. After that, I ended up moving on to section two. So here's it being sliced up in Kira and printed that one out. I didn't really film the process, just the ending. Uh, and then for the rest of the sections, I didn't end up filming any of the printing process, but here's the finished product. So I assembled it all together. I used M3 bolts between the sections to hold it together. And then I ended up uh, using two-part epoxy as well, just to keep make sure there's rigid connections between everything. So once I had it all assembled, there are definitely a couple ugly spots. So where I ended up gluing the two sections together, there's definitely some glue residue there. Um, and there was a little bit of support material left up there, as you can probably see. But overall, the print was actually pretty good uh, straight off the printer. I ended up cleaning it up with some sandpaper and a knife just to get off as much of the ugliness as I could before I went into the sealing process. So to seal the boat, I ended up going to my local Canadian Tire and grabbing a bottle of Flex Seal. I know it's a bit of a meme at this point, but I found in the past that it works pretty good at keeping the water out uh, and it's really easy to apply. I was hoping at the time that this Flex Seal would fill every single crack that exists on the boat. So it, there's four sections. So there's a line between each section that could allow water in and then FDM printing is never perfect. So you need to get in between the layer lines because there will be spots where water will leak. So then I shifted gears towards the shafts. And you know when you have an idea in your head that you think is gonna work out amazingly? So you put in all this effort to design and, and think it through and it ends up just being a total nightmare. Yeah, this was one of those. My three brain cells decided it was gonna be a good idea to try to machine the shafts um, on my crappy little CNC machine. So I made some brackets to hold shafts down onto a piece of wood, made some G-code that would <laughs> cut out the shafts into the desired size and put it on my machine. What ended up happening was that the shaft of course moved, the machine crashed, and it caused just a huge mess. At first I thought it was going pretty well with that initial line that you can see there, but the shaft moved and <laughs> the bit dug in. So I decided that maybe machining wasn't a good idea and moved on to hand making them. So I cut it off with an angle grinder, a little baby angle grinder as you can see here. But once I had those done, I went over to the bench grinder and I used that to uh, initially put in and make these two shafts. So the sad part is, is that I never ended up even using these in the design that it is, as it is currently because I added another support bearing. So I had to make more the other day using hand tools, which was kind of unfortunate, but oh well. So I got excited after and mounted the motors uh, and printed out some rudimentary impellers from another project that I had made. But before I got a chance to test, my girlfriend and I ended up shooting off to Newfoundland to visit our grandparents, which was a really fun trip. As we were there, amongst this beautiful scenery, I started to think about the process of designing impellers. So I decided that I wanted to have empirical data. It started out with me trying to create a force tester for the jet. So the idea was to have the jet push up against a load cell and measure the force in Newton. So that way I could compare different impellers that I designed by the amount of force that they made. The problems really started with the design. So I used a box that I had sitting around 
for the shell, but it turns out that motors are really heavy, so when I put the linear rail on the side, it deformed the box, causing everything to be flexy. This gave me really, really weird and inconsistent results on the load cell. It also didn't help that the load cell was just really inconsistent from when I bought it. And of course, I could have bought another one, but I decided to just scrap this idea and move on to something new. As I was thinking of what to do next, though, my girlfriend and I went on another trip to Europe this time. This trip was also pretty fun. But, again, in the about month that we were gone, I had a chance to think about everything that I could do different. And, oh yeah, I'm forgetting. We also moved halfway across the country and got a kitten. So this really brings us to where we are today. I still want to be able to measure empirically with data the differences between different impeller designs, but this time I decided to move on and use a flow meter instead of the force sensor as it was before. In theory, if we keep everything the same, the outlet size, the throttle profiles, everything, the amount of battery charge, we should still be able to compare the flow rates between the different impellers which from that we can also calculate the exit velocity of water out of the jets. So finally, I started to get the boat waterproof again and ready to try out with the new flow rate sensors. So I used Vaseline and a syringe, as you can see here, to try to waterproof the prop tubes as best as I can, but they still end up leaking a little bit, but honestly, it's it works pretty well to put Vaseline around them like that. Finally, this is the part that I printed to adapt the flow meter to the back of the boat. All the rest of the clips are actually taken today, as in the day that I edited this video. Motors installed, and we have the battery blocks installed. Okay, so I've gotten it to the point where I've built the whole circuit and everything, and it's pretty much ready to go. I just need to write the code, and we should be able to do a test. Okay, so battery is now plugged in and system should be ready to go for a test. So if I hit yes, as you can see, type any key and put that in, it will give me a CSV format file. I don't understand. So on the left, it's supposed to be throttle percent percentage, but for some reason, uh -oh. the vibration, <laughs> for some reason, it doesn't do the math properly. really loud I'm gonna have to fix that okay I'll be back okay I'm gonna try another time here I tried to loosen the motor mounts and switch it around so let's see if that fixes the problem it vibrates that's just part of life <laughs> okay then so that pretty much concludes the jet tester itself so i'm going to load it up with the same amount of batteries as it will be operating with so it sits at the same water line everything in here is waterproof except for the arduino which i'm planning on sort of putting into a ziploc bag and hoping that it doesn't fry my laptop uh yeah so i'm gonna go fill up the bathtub so i have two two impellers to test on the first day here I'm going to be testing a two-bladed uh, design and a three-bladed design, and I'll, I'll look over those with you in a bit, but we're going to be trying both of those just to get us introduced. I'm not really very good at impeller design, so it should be interesting to see how good I can do. So it was my hope to test two impellers, but we ended up having a couple problems, so I only ended up trying once, mostly just to see if the system worked, and while it does actually work, I was definitely having a couple weird issues, so I'm going to have to explore this in another video in the future. I want to do a bunch of different designs and really compare them in detail, uh, but I'll still let you watch the calamities that unfold. Okay, so this is the first time I've ever filled my bathtub in the new city, and look at the water. It's pretty nasty. It's okay. So there's the boat. It's in the water. Here's my makeshift setup, so you can see I have a long cord running to my laptop. Hopefully nothing gets wet and gets fried um and yeah so i'll be recording the screen on the laptop and the test so hopefully this will all work out 
uh, and then we'll look at the data after. Let's go. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm going to go for another try. I put a little flow indicator piece of tape there now and go for another full set of three runs. That's the goal. So we'll see how that goes. Probably love me. Okay. Anyways, that's the idea. Do more testing when I get a chance. So yeah, that's where we're at with the boat right now. I'll give you guys another update when I uh, figure this whole problem out. Um, if I keep going tonight, my neighbors might actually. Work.